Hey, y'all, from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform where you can build a beautiful online presence for your website. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all the websites are ready to go for mobile devices as soon as you get started. And it is so simple. You just pick a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it all your own. So head to squarespace.com slash read to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch your website, use the offer code read to save 10% off your first purchase. Let them know we sent you and let's move on. This week's episode is also being brought to you once again by Universal Pictures film Candyman. It's being directed by Nia DaCosta and Oscar winner Jordan Peele. It's a new, fresh take on the ever so classic cult film Candyman, where, you know, a classic um, tormented Negro and his spirit Mm. may just come out of the mirror and murder you if you say his name five times. So let's do it. This Friday, I dare you to see. Say it. Candyman. 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 One more time. Candyman. Nothing. Nothing's... Wait. What's that? You play. Who? Who is that? What? What's that noise? Oh my god! (laughs) (laughs) Candyman is in theaters this Friday. Go and check it out. Boo. <laughs> Let's start the show. Let's Y'all. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Welcome back to this episode, to this podcast, everyone. I'm Eric and Sinclair. Nerd. And I am Khalees. And this is The Read. Thank you for coming back. It is, indeed. And thank you for coming back, where our milkshakes bring all of the boys to the yard. Every time. And then we tell them to get the fuck off of it, because who the fuck is paying for landscaping? Not you, bitch. So go somewhere. Anyway, this week in Black Excellence, we're going to pass it over to Hansel Emmanuel Donato Dominguez. This young man is a Dominican basketball phenom. Oh, I know. Who has gotten a D1 scholarship to go and play the basketball at an HBCU. This young man unfortunately lost his arm or one of his arms in an accident when he was six years old. Um, It was an accident involving a wall, I believe, that fell on him and they had to amputate his arm. And I think this was around the time he was he was playing basketball. His father, who rescued him two hours later, was at a basketball tournament, I think, at the time of the accident. So basketball and the love for it is in the family. Unfortunately, he had this one accident that happened to him that took an arm, but it hasn't stopped him from being a basketball badass. And as I said, he's received a D1 scholarship offer from Tennessee State University. Okay. Amen. And so, catch up. Like, can you beat him in the game? Probably not, doll baby. No. <laughs> um, sure can. And Wouldn't even try. I, fun fact, apparently Master P's son has also been recruited by the same school around the same time. So, yeah, really? Percy Miller, three-star recruit. That's right, because that's a one more star than two. Didn't the same... <laughs> okay, didn't Lil' Romeo go on a basketball scholarship, too? Sure. I don't know where to, but I could have sworn maybe all of his sons did. Right. I'm pretty sure everyone in the Miller family has played basketball. <laughs> the dogs, the goldfish, everybody right, right. has played. Um, so congratulations, uh, young Dominguez, Mr. Dominguez. Yes. A shout out to the DR and all of the beautiful black people 
out of that island doing beautiful black things. Speaking of beautiful black people from islands doing beautiful black things, another shout out to one Elaine Thompson Harrow. Yeah. Second fastest woman ever to compete in the 100 meter dash. I know that's right. Her time at the recent pre Fontaine. The the pre Fontaine (laughs) classic match. We don't know what it is. (laughs) It's a thing where people do sports. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you would know. (laughs) Of course. Clearly, you're welcome. And so Elaine and the rest of the Olympian Jamaicans once again swept all the girls from gold down to bronze. Catch up. Whoops, you can't because they're faster (laughs) than you. And so Elaine um, scored a 10.54 in the 100 meters, second only to Flojo's 10.49, which she set back in 1988. And so a magical evening for the black, green, and gold Absolutely. for all of the Jamaicans. Once again, shout out to Elaine for being a fast badass and, and, you know, everyone out of Jamaica. I mean, I just, you know, I think about my family and that island and the magic within. And I say yes. And I say thank you. And yeah. it makes sense to me. Running from the law, <laughs> running okay, from wait, your wait. parents' belt. Um. My mother told me that when she was a kid, the ice cream truck used to come around maybe twice a year. And so if you heard the little ice cream truck bell, you had to do what? Run. And so it's like, yeah, exercising your your abilities and your thighs from a young (laughs) age. And it's magic. And who's going to beat them? No one. Right. Well, for whatever reason that y'all dominate, I am just so happy. It warms my heart to see Black women succeeding in anything. So, yes. Shout out to Elaine and all the girls who placed medaled. I don't know what event this was, so I'm not sure what the prize was. 100 meters. No, but I mean, I don't know the event is what I'm saying. Like, I know it's not the Olympics. Sickening. Fast. (laughs) Athletic. All right. Thank that was you. the answer. Thank, You're thank, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Elaine and Shelly Ann and Sherika and everybody else who ran their asses off at the at the classic. You're badasses. We see it <laughs> and we love it. We love it so much. Okay. So this week in our ever um revolving pop culture segment. Um Lord help top. Me. In the name of love, before you break my whole loop it all over. <laughs> so that's um. Oh the name my of the god! Um, Y'all gonna learn not to listen to this around your kids. I don't know why you listen to this. Y'all song. are gonna learn. It's a terrible show. I don't know why you. So awful. <laughs> I cannot. So let's start with some things that we left off last week because we Ooh. spent most of it talking about Lizzo and um, Nicki Minaj's husband. Oh, yes, we did. We did, did that. Okay. Um, so first up, we have Anderson Park, not to be confused with Ivy, um, and a tattoo that he recently uh, got imprinted on his own Negro skin that um, is a (laughs) warning. (laughs) There's a warning for any producers, engineers, and label people that may have their hands on his vocals and masters. On his arm, Anderson Pock has tattooed the following scripture. It reads, When I'm gone, please don't release... (laughs) When I'm gone, please don't release any post-humus albums or songs with my my name attached. Those were just demos and never intended to be heard by the public. Mm. This is interesting because this was revealed to Twitter and, and the girls like... A smooth day or two after we sat up here talking about 
posthumous albums and oh, how everybody be be sucking out these artists demos that they hate after they've passed away unfortunately and release them to go and get a buck and go on tour with their hologram right. so we got a lot of people tagging us in this because it was like oh y'all just talked about this yesterday and i love this tattoo even though i think it is <laughs> kind of crazy like it's and also unnecessary. Yeah, yeah, unnecessary and do whatever. But you know, ultimately do whatever you want with your body. Of course I fuck yeah, with the message. Right. But the the sad part about this is that depending on his contract, they're gonna do that shit anyway. The, what are you gonna do about depending it? Depending yeah. on your whatever legal status you are in at the time of your death, they may just put that bullshit out anyway, knowing that you don't want it to happen. And guess what? The people who call themselves your fans, a lot of them are going to stream it. Yeah. Yeah. The way a lot of people are currently streaming Aaliyah's music, even though the bulk of that money, I'm sure, is going into her raggedy ass uncle's pockets so that he can go down to the strip club or whatever. Or... It's going into the pockets of somebody who failed Aaliyah at some point during her lifetime. Of that, I am certain. So more than once. It's likely. right, like repeatedly, just consistently. So yeah, a lot of. A lot of people asked why this tattoo couldn't have been present on paper rather than <laughs> on his skin. Um, that's not festive. <laughs> that doesn't get the people going. And I mean, I want you guys to know that it is located underneath a tattoo of Animal from the Muppets on the same <laughs> arm. So Andy does what she wants. <laughs> Maybe adjust your expectations here. Y'all, yeah. y'all seem like y'all asking for a lot. <laughs> What you mean, contracts? I, <laughs> hush, hush all that noise. No, Shay, when I saw this for the first time, I was like, who's to say that anybody will, will release an album of your music? Like, are you planning on dying soon? Oh, my God. <laughs> because, I mean, for, because, like, usually these types of albums are dedicated for, like, dead mega legends yeah that's true and then like people who passed away quite recently like in their prime right and so like when i read this i was like oh no is he okay maybe we should leave the door open <laughs> just in case you are fucking stupid <laughs> i'm i think he's fine but that's yeah no but that's a that's an excellent point it's kind of like if it's if this is like uh, I see myself being that kind of legendary artist at the time of my death, then, you know, confidence is good for everybody. And there's is. nothing wrong with having a high self-esteem. So. Nothing. <laughs> but yeah, you're right that it's usually like you have to be like an incredibly established, very well-known artist or like some young person who died tragically and out of nowhere. Exactly. It's ranging from Whitney Houston Prince to like, um pop oh smoke Lord. yeah pop smoke what is that young juice world you oh, know yeah, like juice they world. like the young kids that like die tragically quite yeah, young while Aaliyah. they're still touring and stuff <laughs> right so when i read this i was like oh no is she all right but i think Amy it's fine House. yeah <laughs> exactly. sorry i just keep thinking of people where it's like and even then we fight back yeah, we I fight mean, back people against argue, it and then people also stream it like we are only human so it is but you, I enjoy seeing this. This tickled me, so I'm not mad at it. You know, though, that Barry Hankerson has sent an AOL instant message to the people at at the Whitney Houston hologram. <laughs> Please, because I'm sure he's trying to get an Aaliyah hologram no. in Vegas next. Oh my Arturing. god! Oh my! Of course, Christ. you know it. You know it. You and know. I will literally cuss y'all out if you go see a bundle of pixels and light and shit talking about it's Aaliyah when you could have just played that CD at home for free. I really That's will. Right like yeah. y'all need to not don't don't do this. Please. Y'all like got big sisters? <laughs> don't stop. Nobody can borrow the CD from. Like, or like, can y'all not make CDs no more? I guess yeah. not. Maybe niggas don't have CD burners no more. They used to come on like every computer, but I think if you still got the CD or if you had somebody that got the CD, you could still put it in a disc and a drive. Or even and then, like just the playlist. Like you could paying for a hologram of a woman who has been dead for like 20 years is crazy and y'all yeah, really just, should stop i just don't want y'all to stream that shit at all no shade because i i don't like barry i mean 
in a, in a perfect world, I would prefer that too. But I see why y'all are at the same time. Yeah, so it's a live. And yeah, it's like Mama's putting that money into another Aaliyah album, a posthumous album don't. that will feature Christopher Brown and and Future <sighs> and 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 the baby and and Satan. Oh Christ! Please don't say. Please don't say. Man. I'm just like, <laughs> like oh. I will die. Yeah, I I mean, right? Like we are enabling that, and at the same time. Well, I say we, I mean the the general we. I'm not included in that number, but yeah, it um is sad, but most artists have very little control over what happens to their music after they die. Most artists don't even own their music really. So T. So, you know, but cute tattoo, fun thing to laugh at. Yeah. Fun, fun time. <laughs> Hi Link. You gonna behave today? She's actually been quite behaved. Good. You know, the doll baby is usually not in the room, guys. Usually I exile her to the outside of the room. Mm. Because when she hears me having conversations with people that aren't her, <laughs> she decides it's time for destruction. <laughs> but and she anarchy. is chilling. She is just looking in yeah, the right face. Now, she's just hanging out. And relaxed, yeah. Napping. Good okay. for her. She's still on my lap. She hasn't farted yet. Okay. We'll see how that goes. Knock on wood. Amen. Proud of you, Link. So, another one that from last week that got left off. Nick Cannon, for whatever reason, maybe he was from, I think there's a new season of Wild and Out. I don't know why he was at the breakfast club, but he was down there. And they was talking about the verses and shit like that, and Mariah Carey doing the verses. And he said that the only person that could. Go against Mariah in a versus is R. Kelly. What? No, he didn't. Shut up. <laughs> there is no way he said that. Nicholas Cannon. You, he did. I'm Googling it because you are bullshitting went on me. Power 105. He did not. And he said the only person in this day and age that could have gone against Mariah Carey because she writes all of her songs. She actually produces all her songs. She puts the songs together and performs them at, no. performs them at a high level is R. Kelly. He said... Nobody could versus Miss Mama besides R. Kelly because she writes her writes and produces her own songs. What? Each of the niggas in the room were like, wow, really? This is what we're doing here? And oh we're talking about the breakfast God. club. <laughs> so, Nicholas, what? No. What? And he knew, too, because they were even like, what? That would never... Happen first of all, Mama's in jail. I'm, I'm looking Kelly. at it and I cannot believe this is real. Holy! God. Secondly, <laughs> why would you ever put the? But you know, our Nick Cannon is fully in his turban ass coat hat. Um, you know, let destructive niggas be destructive. Tease, I guess that's what I've gathered from him over the past however long. And it's all right, whatever. I'm letting y'all do whatever the fuck you want at this point because I hate y'all. But I'm can even, Mariah just Mariah? Like, like God, I'm struggling with this. <laughs> Damn, she already like gave you two twins, great, smart, intelligent, badass children. You know what I mean? It has to be linked to you for the fuck ever by you know just by virtue of having kids. But she, like, you couldn't go x amount of time without linking her, right? To, to a sex fucking Kelly, <laughs> a, a human trafficking, sex abusing rapist ass free. Talking about, oh yeah, I know it would not happen because of his choice of personal endeavors and shit like that. I'll, I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you, Nicholas. There's possibly one person, one person mm. that would have been an acceptable. Versus for Mariah Carey. Mariah, no middle name Carey. And that is Whitney Houston. That's it. That's it and we're done. That's <laughs> it and we are finished. And unfortunately, that cannot happen because I'm sure, you know, the Whitney Houston hologram is booked and busy in Vegas for whatever, oh for God, the foreseeable future. So she couldn't pull up to, you know, Madison Square Garden or wherever it would have been at. But more than that, Mariah's not doing this because she's Mariah Carey. Right, which is what 
is true. I'd be surprised if she here. watches. Right. I, I mean, frankly, so would I. But I think what bothers me the most about this is the idea that R. Kelly's level of talent is on the same level as Mariah Carey's. Like, that is actually a crazy statement to make to me. Like, R. Kelly is not a legend. No, I'm sorry, he isn't. He made some good songs, don't get me wrong. He made some shit that we really enjoyed back in the 90s. But I would not put his level of talent nowhere close to Mariah Carey's. I just can't even, like, I. it's difficult for me to fathom niggas really believe in that. I mean, I know people will argue with you about I mean, that. I'm sure they will, but I and don't, that is firmly my opinion. A legend or whatever. No. Yeah, this, I mean. No, I vocally? Just, are you joking me? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm just like, in terms of like like no. vocal ability, writing ability, reading ability, no. producing ability, all of these things. I'm just no. like, but but then even aside from that, the verses is not about it's it's not a, a song writing thing. It's not a it's it's about catalog. It's about when the song comes on, what is the reaction it gets from us, the listener, we, the viewer, us, the concert, go, the ticket purchase. You know what I mean? Right. That's what it's about. It's not about songwriting. It's about when you hit play, what's the vibe? Right. Except for that and time, I it was a, a versus between songwriters. Except for that time. But, yeah, but, other, we didn't give but it's about usually, that. oh, I loved it. What? The Jante and Neo one. It was so fun. But oh, I was it's thinking usually... about the dream and and, oh, and now see I didn't even I forgot John saying the other one did. I see now and I forgot about the dream one, Cedar. But the point remains like it is usually between artists and the songs themselves, like the overall yeah. bodies of work. And I just do not see of all the names you could have said, I would have accepted Stevie Wonder or Prince or Whitney Houston, obviously, or I mean it's a short list, but like R. Kelly is not on it at all. <laughs> Maybe Versus needs a spinoff called like They Could Never. I don't know. Like something that <laughs> is just about solo, you know, oh where you God. just come in and you have like a night where it's almost like instead of a roast, it's like. A Night of Mariah, where, you know, Missy and the Brad and mm-hmm. and Timbaland, like, all these people who've, like, worked with her, like, Babyface, people, like, pull up and they just jam. And yeah. there is no verses. Oh, I would love Some that. people really can't be properly lined up against anyone else. That's, and that's true. Fine. That's true. And Mariah is one of those people, like... Purr. <laughs> I've used... <laughs> I am sorry. I die every time he says it. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, there's a there's a handful of musicians where you don't even need to try to pit them against somebody. And I don't know if Nick Cannon asked this unprovoked or if somebody at the Breakfast Club brought this up. But God damn, what a terrible opinion. The fact For that sure. I didn't see that at all. Uh uh-uh. uh. R. For Kelly. Sure. New details are coming out about that nasty motherfucker every fucking day, girl. Yeah, I see y'all quieted a little bit down when the girls say that he uh, uh, assaulted a young boy. Oh, yeah. You see, they left that shit alone. I heard y'all piping up too much or too loud since then. That's funny. That's interesting. Uh, Because, I mean, you know how they are. I actually don't even want to get started on that shit. Mm. Cause I we don't have to, stop, but yeah, y'all know how you are. I don't got nothing for y'all, bitches, at this point. You all you got. Good luck. Mm. Um. Next up, we have here one soldier boy who is back in the news now. Please, um, after claiming in an unsolicited Instagram live announcement that he is the new <laughs> owner of gaming company Atari, classic gaming Atari, what? classic gaming company Atari. Yes, yes. Soldier boy said that after the success, these uh-uh. I'm doing. You can't, I'm doing air quotes. Not his bootleg. After the success of the soldier bootleg motherfucking crackhead ass alleyway ass video game bullshit that he tried to sell y'all. He says that the, the good folks over at Atari approached him and said, hey, sis, we live. We would love it if you would come over and help bring Atari out from underneath the grave. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, do your weird nigga social media thing 
for us and get Atari popping. Hmm. So, Soldier Boy purchased an Atari hat from Amazon, got on Instagram Live, and proclaimed that he is now the owner of Atari, that they have sold it to him, and that his Soldier Game um, scam, lick, uh, copyright con- violations. <laughs> Those were an issue from the very beginning. That that will soon be sold for approximately 140 million U.S. uh, dollars. What? Now, when I read this initially, I said, here goes this, you know, fucking scatterbrain, birdhead ass nigga talking shit and lying in the name of video games once again. Yes, Atari is. You know, a struggling brand that hasn't done much in the past, I don't know how many decades, besides a couple of, like, I think, published indie games that they've done. And, like, I think they've done some emulator shit, which is probably why Soldier Boy caught their attention in the first (laughs) place. (laughs) How ever. I knew from the moment that this nigga talked about owning Atari that he was lying, likely on three and a half beans, <laughs> hot, like <laughs> drunk on Casa Migos, Casa Cardi, Casa, Casa yeah. Hennessy, Casa Culture, the whole like drunk, high, dumb, and everything in motherfucking between talking about saying he owned Atari. So, of course. The good white folk over at Atari were like, we don't know what the fuck this nigga is talking about. Ever so promptly, they took to their motherfucking Twitter account and said, um, you know, some things are the effects of, let me see if I can find the exact tweet. Like, uh, we know that being the CEO of Atari is like a dream job. Here it goes. Is he? We know that CEO of Atari is a dream job, Mm. but that honor belongs to Wade Rosen, who I had to Google and make sure is not the white man that has continuously accused Michael Jackson of rape, but instead someone else. Oh, wow. Okay. So this person is, in fact, not Soldier Boy. (laughs) Um, And so... Because of Soldier's claims, Atari and their official account on Twitter had to come forward and say, no, still white owned. Sorry that you thought otherwise. <laughs> um, we don't know what the fuck this nigga is talking about. <laughs> so that made Soldier Boy particularly pissed. So he logged back onto Instagram live. Where he told Atari to promptly eat a penis and then uh, posted a screenshot of his contract, which is not a contract, with Atari. (laughs) Wait! What? And then told them, fuck this contract, don't call me no more, don't attach my name to y'all name. This is all the while... He is live streaming from a screenshot of a cooperation agreement that somebody at Atari sent over to him. Now, a cooperation agreement and a contract are two very different things. <laughs> They're very distinct different things that take different, they take place at different times in a deal being made what? with someone else. And if you look at the what the fuck this nigga posted and have any common sense or just the ability to use Google, you will quickly learn that this is not anything about this is not an offering of ownership of the company atari but rather the exchange of atari bitcoin or cryptocurrency for soldier boys participation in atari marketing they were offering this nigga dogecoin in exchange for him saying atari is the shit and he wanted you to believe that they offered him ownership of atari in exchange for him and his weird ass hair that looks like bugles and all of his random ass garbage ass takes on whatever the fuck his dumb ass is talking about and i have promptly asked for y'all to stop believing that this nigga has any stake in gaming or anything uh, thus far and many of you hotep dumb ass straight 
white motherfuckers who listen to this podcast by way of your girlfriend who's listening to the podcast in the other room told me to shut the fuck up and stop hating on niggas who are trying to start a, a, a black owned company and shit like that meanwhile he charging you bitches $300 for a shanky janky raggedy ass ashy ass emulator that you could have easily paid $30 for from someone in China by way of Amazon.com but have at it have at it have at it spend your PPP loan ass money on a soldier game when you could have easily got one of these raggedy ass shits that's basically just half of an Android phone and a trip to Tulum but you want to tell me what the fuck to say I'm trying to help your stupid ass but you want to listen to me <laughs> anyway soldier you don't own Atari you don't own soldier any motherfucking thing bitch and honestly you need an evaluation and I haven't forgot what Nia Riley said about you beating the baby out of her <gasps> but don't nobody give a fuck about that because you're straight and you're a nigga and people find you funny and that's all that it takes yikes the only way that you're an makes, idiot <laughs> the only way this makes sense is if the marketing agreement is so i'm gonna get on instagram live and lie and say that y'all sold atari to me and then y'all gonna get on twitter and be like no we didn't and then I'm clearly that wasn't <laughs> but like that's the only way this could possibly make any fucking sense because like nigga there's just no you how did you really believe that you were purchasing atari when they likely were what happened <laughs> Was Atari said, hey, soldier, we're in talks with the good girls over at Zeus Network oh, to do some, <laughs> some do some ad campaigns between episodes of Jocelyn Cabaret and whatever the fuck Ray J is talking about. So if you would kindly come on to the Zeus Network oh. and tell the girls to download the latest Atari app, we will give you 50 cents worth of Atari tokens a month. And this bitch <laughs> tried to translate that into your fucking stupid asses as I own Atari now. And when they probably told your dumb asses that that was a lie, he tried to cuss them out and tell you that he was, that they wrong and show you a screenshot of, of a co-op agreement as if that's a, co a contract. All of you bitches are stupid. Fuck you. Isn't Dogecoin worth like 32 cents? <laughs> it's not even Dogecoin. It's Atari coin, which is likely worth wow. just even as less. much. <laughs> you could likely take a Chuck E. Cheese token down to the bank and get just about as much. <sighs> oh my God. It really is Atari token. Okay. I am logging the fuck out of this. You cannot Dumbass, be for real. Dumbass, <laughs> lying ass bitch. Trying to talk to me about video games like I should be nice to this bitch. Not even Meanwhile, I'm Bitcoin? trying to help your motherfucking oh stupid ass. You could actually buy a true console that will actually work. And even if something does happen to it, you wow. will have a team of people that will fix it for you gratis. But you would rather listen to this dumb, stupid ass nigga and give him all of your hard earned <laughs> maybe money. For some shit that you could easily get off of motherfucking dailymotion.com, you stupid oh, bitch. Wow. Have at it. Okay. Everybody Next has fun. This is crazy. Rumor has it that there might be trouble in paradise for one uh, JT and Lil Uzi Vert. Oh, good. AKA Steven Uzi Verse. Because apparently the girls went onto their profiles and discovered that they stopped following each other. That's right. <laughs> As of earlier last, la late last week, earlier this week, the girls had it that JT was no longer following Little Uzi of Vert, <coughs> and that Little Uzi of House Vert was no longer following Jatavia. And that this must mean that there is trouble in ghetto paradise. Hey, living man, our life, living in gangsters paradise. And so they. S <laughs> <laughs> A little choreography to go with it. <laughs> And so I read this and I was like, oh, finally, my bitch is free. And then I went to go and do some like research and I see that as of the time of recording, Jatavia is still following um, Uzi. Uh, well, <laughs> so I guess she followed him back. Was this oh, on the Instagram report that I read? Or... Yes, this okay. is on Instagram. 
of the report that I read at the time of reporting, Uzi was only following JT, JT alone. Whereas now on the little Uzi Vert Instagram, he follows absolutely nobody. Oh no, that's worse. <laughs> Feeling his wildest Beyonce, I guess. Well, I mean, I'm sure the JT Mafia cannot wait for this relationship to be over. I know I can't. And I can't blame him because this nigga, first of all, he got you dressing real, real, like real weird. But (laughs) additionally, everything else that has come out about him and his ex-girlfriend or whoever's allegations and this shit about Mm -hmm. buying a planet or whatever, like, I, I'm, I'm sure that. The JT Hive is just wants her to be free so fucking bad. Y'all just want her to get away from this nigga so fucking bad. And she deserves it. So I'm yet praying along with you. But if she's still following him and he's not following her, I mean, I feel like a child even saying those words out loud as if they matter. But (laughs) that seems wrong at the same time. I mean, it lines up. Honestly, I don't know how much longer y'all are going to elevate these niggas that clearly don't give a fuck about y'all culture, community, advancement, preservation, any of the protection, mm-hmm. any of these motherfucking things. These don't give a fuck about you, but you lift them up all the live long day because their songs are catchy. They're cute. Whatever you like, everything about them, they cool and shit like that. And what's more is that holding niggas especially if influential niggas accountable for their fuck shit like possibly assaulting their ex and putting them in the hospital (laughs) like it really requires no kind of input from y'all like you don't give a fuck about any of that it is what it is and so have Mm -hmm. at it i really hope that all of these girls lead you into the promised land i just know that they won't so but as far as JC is concerned, like that's the doll. I, you know, she a Miami bitch. I feel like regard regardless of what's going on in her relationship, she should have the ability to pick herself up off of her own mm-hmm. too. And I can't wait for this to be over because it will eventually be over. And you know, you can you know be a bad bitch on your own right or in your own right. Mm-hmm. But like I said, since I went to her page, I see she's still following. I was like, you know, it sounds like you know us, us, and when I'm me. Cause <laughs> I've, out, I've outgrown that stage of my life, Nigga, and I praise like, God I for your it. Stupid ass in the, in first, the first place. place. I'm not gonna follow you in the first place. I've learned my Bitch. lesson about that. Fuck shit. about it, right? But yeah, I just would love better for her than this. Situation. And you can tongue kiss my gooch if you have anything to say about oh my goodness the read and straight niggas and whatever the fuck these niggas don't care about you or us or any of the fuck body else it's fine that you love their songs they create bops it is what it is you find them stylish you want their shoes you want their watch you want whatever the fuck i don't give a fuck i don't care they don't give a fuck about you don't give a fuck they damn sure don't give a fuck about me (laughs) And they don't give a fuck about any of the women, whether they're attached to us, you, your mama, whoever the fuck. So I can say, what, well, have your fun. Do whatever the fuck you want to. Because I really am not expecting anybody to act like they got any sense. I'm here for a, sh- uh, a short time and not a lunch, t- a brunch time. I'm here for a brunch time yeah, that's it. and not a lunch time. That's in the Bible. Okay. It is. Old Testament, New Testament. It is the only scripture in the Old Testament that got rebooted for the new. <laughs> No, the you don't hear no one talks about that. <laughs> no one talks about that. And so, like, I really don't have it. Have a good time. Let everyone lead you oh directly where they're gonna lead you. Because all they're gonna lead you into some more niggas that lie, some more niggas that put hands on you, some more motherfuckers that abuse you, some more motherfuckers that are toxic and shit. The more motherfuckers that feel like because they deep thought you down to the balls is you should pay for their motherfucking bills oh and have God. nothing to motherfuck. Like all you motherfuckers. Good luck, because I don't care. I'm just trying to retire my my parents. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, give my family everything that they need. Nephews, nieces, great, whatever the fuck. Put them through college and things like that. Spoil them rotten and all that shit. And everybody else, you got it. Yeah. Between, between fuckery like this and COVID. And it's you me. Know- you know, knowing young people. I'm sorry, people, that was. I mean, you you had a lot to say, but it was on your spirit, and I'm glad you let it out. <laughs> but knowing young people, she probably gonna unfollow him, follow him again, and then unfollow him probably before this show even come out. <laughs> like, 
they're young and they're famous. So I would not even be clocking their social media follows too hard if I was y'all. Like, just let them break up naturally the way most people do. It'll happen. Also, what brigade of niggas on second wave lunch are camped out in these motherfuckers um, following lists it's to so see weird. who they have unfollowed it's our stuff. So How do y'all know that? Of all the ways I have to waste time in a given day, I cannot say that I have ever done that. Like, I just <sighs> have never done that. I am not that invested at all in who you niggas are following. How the fuck do y'all be? Do you have alerts for this? Why would I care? Who gives a damn? <laughs> Why would I give a shit about this? It's the most useless thing. Uh, what else do we have in here? So, apparently Kanye docks Drake because... What? Straight. I miss so much not following the shade room. Because... <laughs> no. I swear, you be blowing my mind every week with these topics. Kanye West doxed Drake. Oh, my God. <laughs> So Kanye and Drake both have new albums that are on the way, highly anticipated. The girls are wondering what's taking so long for their girls to upload. Ra ra ra. So the discussion as of late has been that Kanye and Drake, who have for a while now had like some weird <laughs> nigga hip hop tension between them, that they might be on some rivalry shit trying to outstream the other i don't so okay kanye done wore 18 pairs of pantyhose on, pantyhose on his head then went to every motherfucking stadium that he could in the country to play y'all this album without releasing it and so y'all are saying oh well mama is waiting for drake to release his album so that he can release his album so that they can go run the numbers up and be oh my goodness who shot john or whatever um so Kanye has moved from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I believe now he's doing his pantyhose show in Chicago, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I don't really give a leave fuck. Us so alone. but he's somewhere else. Like, the rocket told him, get the fuck out. So no, that's Houston. Who? The <laughs> beep. Mm, it's okay. Nobody pays attention to that team until very recently. Wow, that's rude. And I mean, so you don't know what it's called though. So I do, actually. Oh, okay. Who are they? Atlanta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was stupid. Thank you. The Lloyd Lovers. Okay. <laughs> the De- the Decatur Demons. The Peachtree the Peach Tree Patriots. <gasps> what? <laughs> yeah. Whatever you said. The Atlanta the Atlanta Aviators. The AC Aliens. The AC Aliens. There you go. That's what their basketball team You got team is it. Thank you. Everyone knows it. Everyone obviously, you know, you were just joking, clearly. Duh, obviously. I'm not You don't like, don't don't go type. Her. Don't go type. I'm not typing anything. I saw the screen light up. <laughs> it is sign. <laughs> I was looking at the weather for tomorrow, no, so I know weren't. what to do about my planning for tomorrow's errands. Okay. So the Atlanta Hawks is the team in Atlanta because I know that because I know sports. You do and yeah the girls were like please leave and so apparently Kanye did and after Kanye released I mean after Drake released a little shady a line or two on the latest trippy red album Mm. on a song called Betrayal um Drake says all these fools I'm beefing that I barely know 45 44 let it go yay ain't changing shit for me it's set in stone this is apparently aubrey's way of saying i'll release my album when i want to okay and kanye has nothing to do with that kanye apparently felt way about this and screenshotted oh his good music children and then he um posted a screenshot of his i message where he said uh the following Kanye <laughs> said in his and his tweets uh with a uh a photograph 
of Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. He said, after adding Pusha T to the conversation of an eight-person a group chat, I live for this. I've been fucked with by nerd-ass jock niggas like you my whole life. You will never recover. I promise. I have to assume that Drake is probably in this group chat. Um. Oh, that would make more sense. It would make more sense because I don't know okay. why else. But I mean, Kanye also not historically making decisions that make sense to the rest of us. So, anything else to do, guys? Like any world problems you want to solve real quick? <laughs> Anybody whose life you want to change? <laughs> well, alongside the shady uh, group chat, Kanye also tweet <laughs> slash deleted, post slash deleted, um, a shot of Drake's mansion in Toronto alongside the address and location of it on uh, Google Maps. Um, to which Drake then Why? posted a photograph of his light-skinned laughter while riding around Toronto, (laughs) uh, apparently unbothered. This is just so Real Housewives of (laughs) y'all. What? (laughs) And y'all act like women keep a mess. And y'all act like... Y'all act like women are dramatic and stupid and over the top and doing, like... (laughs) <laughs> screenshotting her house on Google Maps and then her responding with a laughing Instagram. Like, this is so real housewives of y'all. Petty and dramatic and ridiculous. And for what? <laughs> for what? What does this even come from? Because <laughs> Drake said his pool is bigger <laughs> than Kanye's? Because he said his album rollout don't have nothing to do with Kanye? Like, what? What is really at the root of this? Because it can't be something that matters. I farted. Oh, uh, what? So, okay. <laughs> I just, it might be on record. <laughs> I doubt it. Because I don't care. I mean, I really, I doubt anybody would just have known. Just in case. Had you because I didn't, that. I didn't attempt to hide it this time. Just so in case you care and or want to know how I feel about the current state I of the I cannot believe your fart. I chose this moment to well, fart. Okay. Thank you. So we're back and I don't, (laughs) this is just so rich and so unimportant. Yep. In case you didn't know, this might, you know, reach back to, uh, you know, this Kanye Drake feud that apparently has a lot of roots reaching back to a moment that, uh, started with his beef with Pusha T where Pusha T was like hey guys Drake has a baby he's not telling y'all about and he has a deal for the baby coming out with Adidas and then Drake was like oh my goodness only reason he knows about this is because of Kanye because I showed Kanye pictures of the baby and told him about it and stuff like that and Kanye was like oh my god I don't know what he's talking about he is tripping you know how like skinny niggas be like- and then so now here we are <laughs> this is uh, Andy could not have written this better Oh my God, Andy having like a one on one with them would actually be severe, incredible, and entertaining. It would. I would absolutely watch it. I'm so sorry to say, I and I would still spit would. at Andy Cohen's feet if I see him in public because he's trash. <laughs> oh, he's what, trash. He's what a terrible he, person. Oh damn, what would he do? Other than you know everything Existed, on Bravo, okay. Monique, Bravo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> and I recently saw a clip, and by recently I mean last night, saw a clip of that Potomac reunion that I didn't watch because I haven't watched it, where he told Monique, "Oh, like, isn't you not being on the show anymore going to affect your marriage because of the check?" As if to say, like, her not get like her compromised Bravo check. <laughs> was going to, like, fuck up her marriage because the doll was going to be upset. And she quickly was like, child, that little bitty check ain't going to do nothing in comparison to what my husband was bringing in. And Andy was like, oh, but he's not bringing in that money anymore, right? He used to be. And Monique had to check him like, no, my husband is fine. His investments are fine. I was going to say, mind your business. What? You're really pressed that this black girl came in and was ready to whoop ass and wasn't ready to suck your stupid Caucasian dick or Bravo's (laughs) fucking dick and balls to keep this motherfucking job because she's fine. And so you tried to play her on some, oh, well, the check, like, isn't it going to fuck up your marriage? Anybody pressed about your whack-ass marriage? 
bitch. Andy, with that fucking bouffant bitch, your Blanche Devereaux looking <laughs> weak ass bitch. Oh, goddamn. But like, because you, you a daddy now, you can say whatever the fuck you want to. Keep it moving, bitch. Do you Anybody think- press, you can get your ass dragged too, ho. Soft ass bitch. Okay, you doing you all saying? this? It, this I'm literally thinking. just reminded me of when, um, <clears throat> oh my god, now his name is completely escaping me. But he was on Watch What Happens Live, and Andy was real inappropriate with him, and he had to get him Titus. together. Right? Yes, when Titus was on Watch, this is reminding Do me. Do you show, that. girl? Yeah, yeah, like girl, this here, stop that. Worry about you, but does Andy this Cohen, is not where that happens? Yeah. Does he think niggas haven't heard of passive income? Does he think niggas don't know nothing about invest all these years with working with Atlanta and you don't understand that? Like, see, black people do you, know how to do things with money, especially when they have a lot of it. You spent a lot of time scooping up people that either were pressed for the money or pressed for the fame, and you felt like you could talk to whoever the fuck on your network mm. like that because everybody you feel like fall into that it's category. Pre- yeah. That's not the oh, case. That's true. And a couple of them motherfuckers spiced up on you and reminded you that they didn't need to be there, and you took offense to that and tried to get spicy with them, especially the black ones. And so Monique had to remind you, I'm not Giselle, okay? My house doesn't look like a Nintendo Labo. My house isn't a motherfucking <laughs> blanket fort, bitch. Bitch. So actually, I'm not pressed about this motherfucking uh, check that you you bringing in, girl. You can actually keep it. Leave me alone. Yeah, you and your fucking <laughs> mullet. Anyway, what's next? Yeah. Last but not least, where are we in time? Because I don't even feel like I want to talk about. Yeah, 15. Well, that's not okay. So that's it for the hot tops this week. Yeah. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a break after. <laughs> We do. This is not happening. Kid Furious Sports Shows. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dwayne, I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> this week in Kid Furious Sports Shorts. We're here to talk about. The same kid for you who did not know the name of the Atlanta NBA team. Excuse me, I absolutely <laughs> knew the name. I was trying to get you to say the name. Oh, right. So that you could catch up to my expertise that as an analyst. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. Wow, the disrespect. <laughs> Anyhow, this week, we're not here to talk about basketball. We're not here to talk about football, and we're not here to talk about track. Instead, we're here to talk about the new sport that is taking niggadom by storm. The greatest show on earth. Oh, no. That's right. Absolutely not. We're here to talk about all of your base head ass cousins out behind the Walgreens, <laughs> stacking crate on top of crate, trying to win somebody's motherfucking um, money for their mid and their Reggie that week. No. Girlfriend, so, if you haven't heard, you can simply look up the crate challenge in which numerous niggas around the country have been stacking up milk crates and then trying to walk across them as if they are Mario, Luigi, Wario, Waluigi, Toad, and Peach, and Daisy for whatever inexplicable ass Negro reason, just, I guess, for our own entertainment and YouTube remixes. And so that has led to many people breaking their goddamn spinal cord, damn near snapping their neck yep. and maybe getting some money for cloves and wine black and mild <laughs> in the effort to entertain the girls on TikTok <laughs> and Instagram reels. Now why am I in it? <laughs> so I want to particularly shout out everyone who's made an effort. There have been plenty of people across the South, Midwest, West Coast, and uh, certain parts of Boston and New Jersey and <laughs> Queens that have been climbing on these crates and snapping their vertebrae from side to side in an effort to make your your um bored asses laugh and send texts. <laughs> we want to send in a special shout out to one T. TZ is an, an average black American round the way girl, possibly from Cleveland, Ohio, who effortlessly climbed the Negro crag from side to side 
and was able to collect money from all of her ghetto suitors and take it home. Also, we're um, sh- showing honor to one Mike who seemingly from, I don't know, Newark, maybe Forest Hills, possibly Bushwick, who also not only effortlessly cr- climbed Legends of the Negro Temple, but also did so while uh, rolling a blunt. You may have seen this now viral video of Mike from possibly East Orange or maybe the Bronx mm-hmm. doing, um, you know, the the um, <laughs> the Niggerlodian guts <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Please While also up. successfully rolling, lighting, and smoking a blunt on the way down. He also collected a cash prize. Now, most of your uncles, many who seem to be named Obadiah, possibly Myrtle, and anime, um, may have died or been admitted to the emergency room in a quest mm-hmm. to collect, uh, you know, two dozen $5 bills to make it past this crate challenge. <laughs> and I simply want to know why. I haven't received an answer, but that's not what sports shorts it's about. It's about talking about the athleticism, the nerve, the uniqueness, charisma, and talent that it takes to 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 make it past this the challenges such as this and the sportsmanship within. I want to know why the fuck y'all are doing this. I want to know why the fuck y'all are doing this on cement. I want to know what kind of boredom it takes for you motherfuckers to say, hey, let's bum rush the closest CVS, the nearest Kroger or Publix, and take their crates from them to simply climb on it for the amusement of Instagram reels. No one has yet answered me. And I'm concerned. But here we are reporting live from your events, wishing you all the well. I just imagine, I ha- I can't help but imagine what it must be like to be a doctor, to be a nurse, to be anyone working in the medical field. I cannot fathom. Struggling to get niggas breathing on a day-to-day basis. Struggling without resources to keep you ungrateful hoes alive in the face of the Delta Sigma Theta variant, the Kappas, the Kappa variant of COVID, simply shimmying down your fucking esophagus and infecting your lungs. What they are doing, when they do, what all of these medical officers, what they are possibly doing after spending 20 to 30 minutes in the storage closet, bawling their eyes out because they don't have enough help and coming out trying to get the next bitch breathing. Meanwhile, here you go, rushing Malik in on a goddamn gurney from his appearance on Wild and Crazy Migos, where he snapped his goddamn spinal cord in two, trying to do the goddamn crate challenge. Oh, no. What is that about? What's it gonna take? You don't want to get the motherfucking vaccine because of what it might do to your lungs, but you're willing to sacrifice your goddamn spine, rib cage, femur, shin, sternum, every one of your goddamn bones and vertebrae and muscles for the sake of TikTok. That's it for this week in Kid Fury Sport Shorts. We talk about all things sports and everyone um, doing a great job in it. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, I do this for you guys and for um, diversity. <laughs> You're welcome. And I, gonna we're going to... You have any... Please, yeah, okay, great. I just... Just would love to take a break right now. <laughs> we will come right back with your letters. Hey, y'all, don't you hate when you run in errands and you got everything you needed, but you forgot maybe one thing at the store and you're already home and you definitely don't feel like going back out? Well, now you can get snacks, drinks, and household essentials in 30 minutes with DoorDash. DoorDash connects you with the restaurants you love right now and right to your door. And now you can get the grocery essentials that you need with DoorDash too. That's right. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. Ordering is easy. You just open the DoorDash app 
shop, choose what you want from where you want, and then your items are safely left outside your door with the contact list delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national chains like Popeye's, Chipotle, Cheesecake Factory, whatever's available in your area. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. So go ahead and download the DoorDash app today and enter code READ. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter code READ. That's right, code READ for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change and terms do apply, but go check them out and now let's get back to the show okay folks we are back it is time now to read your listener letters yes it is send your questions to ask the read at gmail.com we may just read them aloud on the show um and last week we asked y'all to send some beyonce related questions which you did i have selected a handful of them <clears throat> For us to go through, we're going to start off with one that those of you who have been listening to the show from the very beginning um, probably heard, not yours, but mine, they heard in real time. But if you are newer to the show, then um, then you probably don't know the answer to this. But this question comes from Brianna, who says, have either of you ever met Beyonce in person or got uh-huh. so close to her that you could touch her? And if so, what was that experience like? um okay so i have two things that come to mind (laughs) i've talked about both of them one was okay so the very first time that i ever saw beyonce in person was due to stalking I did. <laughs> I made a YouTube video about this once. And oh my god, you did! <laughs> basically, my friend Mike was like, "Oh my god, he was." We were both in New York City visiting at the time. I didn't live here, and he was like, "I just saw Beyonce go into this building. Like, oh my gosh, she looks so cool." Blah blah blah. I'm like five blocks away, <laughs> so I basically like bum rushed over to where he was <laughs> and sat there waiting for Beyonce to possibly come out of this building. And it took about four hours. I guess she was working. Wow. Wow. Saying this out loud now as a 33-year-old is like, wow, (laughs) you're a freak of nature. (laughs) I mean, and I know this story, and this is something I would have also done, and it still sounds crazy to me. Yeah, like, like, at the time, I thought nothing of it, and it was like, yeah, this is a totally normal thing to do. (laughs) Who has four hours to sit outside? Legitimately sat outside this building (laughs) for hours. But I had never, no, I had never been to a Beyonce concert at the time. I had never like seen her. I had had never experienced this lady at all. And I was just like, I just wanted to get a glimpse of her because I lived in Miami at the time, and it was like every time that she or Destiny's Child was in the city, I was either broke or not in town. So I never Mm. got to see her. And I just wanted to lay eyes on her and confirm that she was a real person. (laughs) (laughs) And so we sat outside there. (laughs) Miss Tina came out first, got into her um, fancy smancy ride. And then a little bit later, you know, the queen walked out and I waved her and whispered, hi and she said hi and waved back and that was you know that made my life yeah um and it was the greatest thing that had ever happened to me at the time <laughs> and then <laughs> i love how these aren't exaggerations yeah and then i saw her at revel which was my first ever beyonce concert mm-hmm. and i was blessed by way of friendship to be um admitted to one of the pits on the side of the stage that she had so i was very close and again, I spoke about this online towards the end of the show. She was performing Halo. And I knew by watching countless Beyonce performances, DVDs and concerts and stuff, that she had like she will she would do a thing on Halo where she would go to one side of the stage and she mm-hmm. would like interact with some people on the in the pit and like sing to everyone. And then she would do the same thing on the other side of the stage. So she did the she did it on one side of the stage, and I was like, She's going to come over here afterwards. 
if I know my Beyonce, she's That's gonna right. come over here afterwards. And so everybody in in the pit that I was in was on the opposite side because that was closest to her. You know what I mean? Because she was mm-hmm. on the other side of the stage. So I stood on the other side because I was like, this bitch is going to come back over here. And so, of course, she came right over to the other side and eventually stood right in front of me. And she yeah. reached her blessed Creole fingers <laughs> down into that pit directly towards mine and they locked <laughs> we held hands y'all did and she saw my halo she saw my <laughs> halo and no one will ever be able to take that away from me i'm surprised i've watched my hand since honestly mm-hmm. i mean that's the pandemic first so. beyonce concert ever and we touched yeah get into it <laughs> that's special that's blessed just saying, not many girls can tell that story. <laughs> not many, yeah. Not many, it's true. So Matt, no. We haven't, like, spoken. Right. <laughs> but right, we've I've, not been introduced. I've, I have gotten a lot. <laughs> I've touched her. We've, yeah. I've touched her. I've touched Beyonce. Right. I've held her hand. Yeah. I have touched Beyonce in my life. We have touched. Yes. <laughs> my skin... <laughs> And her skin. Has touched her skin. It has. That has happened. Get into it. You're welcome. (laughs) I've never held her hand, but I was also in the pit um, at a Beyonce concert. And honestly, in hindsight, I'm so glad I went. I'm so glad I went, y'all. Woo! Because I can't fathom doing this in a post-COVID world. But I was in a pit outside in a fucking stadium out in New Jersey all damn day. On my feet for 12 hours, and I've never been more joyful in my life. Can't complain. Because, like, you spend a trillion dollars to be there, mm-hmm. but it is experiencing Beyonce <laughs> in a way that I don't care how good your seats are, bitch. It is just nothing like this. You are right fucking there. It just, I cannot wow. even describe to you accurately how incredible it is to watch this. I'm ascending. On stage. Like, and she's like, six feet away from you like she's reaching her hand down and touching everybody and niggas are screaming and passing out i'm ascending from the mere conversation like (laughs) every time i think about it i'm just so glad that i went when i had the chance to because i don't know that i'll ever get the chance to do that again and it was incredible it it is just is the most amazing experience like as phenomenal as she is from any seat in the stadium it is something about being right there on that stage that (laughs) <laughs> Bitch, and like just, no shade <laughs> you're just I, right there <laughs> no shade i caught the lizzo comparison that you made afterwards <laughs> in terms of like there's just like a level of commitment to putting on a show with every molecule that you have but that's not what i was saying of, yes yeah 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 <laughs> You know, not a lot of his name niggas be like, "Eh, eh, eh." yeah, you know, you get, but wait a minute, but (laughs) (laughs) yeah, it's just like that's what I want. Like, when I'm paying for a ticket to to go to a show, regardless of where I'm at, that's what I would like, you know. And uh, there have definitely been a lot of shows I've gone to before that don't consist of choreography and big LED screens and all that stuff that are still fantastic, but oh, yeah, man, oh, man. That like you right can there. you can see your fave on stage and be right there next to him at SOBs. Like it don't have to be a stadium tour, but being able I've to I've seen Jasmine sing countless people, countless just, mostly people. just standing there, and I'm right. like, how did this happen to me? This blessing. Yeah, I've had many moments like that. Like that is God. I miss I miss New York before COVID. I really do, bitch. But, a cute little, you oh know, wherever God. the way, little R&B, yes. con- little intimate yes. R&B show. Just going to see Solange at a fucking laundromat in Brooklyn. Bitch, leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, so anyway, amazing <laughs> show. Caesar performing live at the Soul Food Place. <laughs> it's like, like a, a hundred people tops. Yeah. It's just, we're just here. And this is yeah. just what we're gonna, all right. So, um, but yeah, <clears throat> that was my in-person Beyonce experience. It was not specific to me. Half the people in the pit that night or on that tour had the exact same experience, but you know, they also got to see what I saw that I evening. I can't believe I touched just, that lady. I can't believe I was 
on my feet. And I was like in my 30s. I was probably like 34, 35 when I did this. So I was like on my feet all day, the majority of the fucking day. And I could not have been happier. And then we spent another enough. few hundred dollars on merch too and bought all the fucking merch, girl. I don't think about it enough. That boycott Beyonce t-shirt. I bought it so I many I still times. have that. <laughs> I got so irked by so many people that I would wear that shirt out and they'd be boycott like, Boycott Beyonce. Ugh. I'd be like, bitch, this is Calm from down. her show. When Stupid. a white woman on the Upper West Side came at me about it with her daughter, I was like, right. <laughs> Imagine me, a clear black fag, wearing a bully like, cup. <laughs> I'm a black woman. How are you asking me something about Beyonce right now? Bitch, are you serious? <laughs> the, the bravery and audacity that would be required. Like, you should just assume that I know something you don't. <laughs> like, right, right. And it's in the affirmative. You should not Where's your iPad, boy- bitch? You can't have no boycott Beyonce shirt on and not have an iPad with additional so, information. Yeah, and a call like, to action. I saw that show. I can't even tell you how many different times I went, but I only paid for a pit ticket once because it was like somebody's rent yeah. and it was absolutely worth it. I Every will time. never forget that night. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's move on. Next question is from Blake who says, if you could pick the set list for Beyonce's next tour, tell us three songs that you would definitely include or which songs you would choose to open and close the show. This is an and or. So three songs we would include or opening and closing songs. Right. Well, she usually opens on a big bop and closes on a big Mm -hmm. ballad. Yeah. So when I thought about this, I said just because she opens with Crazy in Love usually, I decided to to switch it up and do Get Me Body because I feel like it's similarly going to get the girls going, especially if she does, lets the extended version play out and does the choreography on stage. Like they're going to fucking gag. Or if she does the thing where she stops a song halfway through and then does some nigga jig and then comes back to it, even better. <laughs> she's good for that. Cause she's good for that as well. Yeah. So I would, but yeah, I would say give me body to open the show and then EXO to close it. Just because I think it's sweet and sends people home on the right note with the right message and, you know, encourages love and good feelings and all that shit. I like EXO. And it's not Halo, which I'm pretty sure nobody in the hive wants her to ever close with Halo again. So (laughs) I've I've consistently lived for a Halo closing. But she did, like, she did, I think, at some point transition into doing EXO towards the end. And the girls were like, oh, my God, thank you. But I love, yeah, like, I, I really do love EXO. I would also... Like I was here, but I don't know that I if I was here fits like a stadium tour vibe. Not it feels like- to end the show. Cause like she does it. It's not that she doesn't do it, but like she lets it play while she's like showing videos of the kids that we'll never see again yeah. in the background or something like that. That it's feels like, like second to last, if anything. Right, right. So, like, when she be playing that one song with her and Jay Z on, on the run, where they be standing in front of the sh- in front of the stage and yeah. they just watch like all their personal home yep. videos, yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh my god, you just reminded me oh. <laughs> the fact that I saw niggas in Paris in Paris. <laughs> Still can't even Christ. imagine. Christ, I cannot believe that I have being lived a this nigga life. in Paris, and it's like wow. twenty niggas at this show. <laughs> True, but still, that makes it all the more special. right. It really did. Like we lost it, and I have to say, none of the white people around me actually said nigga, but they was well, going up. Good. They was going up. When I tell you, they was jumping. Anyway, this is not what we're talking about. Yeah, I think for me, I would probably go with like starting. I think I would choose Sorry or Countdown. Ooh, Countdown. Um, I think both of them have really strong openings. Um, and then I also actually just like yesterday, maybe found um, the little, I don't know if you remember this, but during the Mrs. Carter tour, the Countdown like interlude intro transition was Mm -hmm. so cute i don't remember what song led into countdown but there was like this little cut that they did like leading into countdown that was so cute that i was obsessed with that kind of like separated the vocals a little bit um 
So just like I literally was just listening to that like yesterday and the way that it sounds like the way that it starts is perfect. So I don't know. Maybe I would go for like countdown. Sorry. I think I would also end with like an EXO or maybe like uh, dangerously in love. Um, and then for a third, I would go for something that she doesn't perform very often, like green light. Um, nothing out there for me with Missy Elliott, preferably if Missy <laughs> Elliott was in town, <laughs> preferably if Missy Elliott could that perform would be with her. Um, yeah, I would like to just, I think if I had the choice, I would pick like songs that she hasn't performed in a while or ever. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I fucks with that. Um, thank you, Blake, for the question. Our next one comes from James, who says, "Which three to four songs would you want to be part of a Beyonce tribute, and who do you think should perform them?" <laughs> now that's tricky because I don't know who will be out when it's time for a Beyonce tribute. What are the begin. numbers? How many? <laughs> three to four songs. <laughs> okay, I'll try three. <laughs> um, so I, I had a little time to think about this earlier so i can go first if you want me to yeah go for it. i feel like we're probably gonna name some of the same girls though okay so i have y'all are going to argue y'all are not gonna agree and that's fine i'm just letting you know that now you asked us so first of all <laughs> i want to hear other side oh cute and i would like it of the girls i know now who are out now I would like to hear that by either her or Janae Aiko. Love it. Love I think it. Either one of them would sound really pretty on that. I would I'm also not like to see Love on Top performed by Fantasia May. <gasps> Bitch! Curate! <laughs> you need somebody with a real voice. Bitch, can you imagine Fantasia Barrick? Word. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I I need it because Fantasia will give that song the energy it deserves. Bitch, she's kicking her shoes off. On They're the coming the first. fuck off. Go you don't off. even need Tasia to do a bunch of choreography. You can have girls in the background for that. Just have her sing the fucking song. Wow. Um, I want to see Crazy in Love, of course. And I feel like who better but Chloe and Hallie. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Like the proteges, I can absolutely see Chloe completely recreating everything about the look, the vocal, the all of it. And um, and then I would round it out with I care. And honestly, the only voice I want to hear is Brandy's. <laughs> this is sickening. I really don't know that I can top this. <laughs> That was a good lineup. Don't you want to hear really Brandy good. sing I Care? Don't you want I Brandy to cover that I would love so to hear bad. Brandy sing I Care. Another song where I'm like, you. I mean, you have to be a vocalist. You have to be able to sing to sing I Care. It's probably one of yeah. Beyonce's most technically difficult songs. I mean, the bitch probably. imitates the fucking guitar. And so I'm just like, yeah, it's so this is, it's really narrowing down the options here. But Brandy, I think, could absolutely kill it. So yeah. those are my choices of, you know, what I know now as far as music and girls. Wow. You slayed me. Oh, okay. You. Let you me know. see. <laughs> I was ready for you to be like, you're wrong. <laughs> no, I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> like all of those choices are really good. Oh, yay. Um, okay. Well, I definitely did think Chloe and Hallie. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought Chloe and Hallie, I would have, I would have loved for Chloe and Hallie to do Kitty Cat. <gasps> oh, yes. <laughs> I would mm. love- oh, that definitely works. <laughs> I love Chloe and Hallie to do Kitty Cat. I would probably want for Miss Normani to do either Baby Boy or Crazy in Love. Yes. I would mm, probably... Yes. <laughs> I think I would look to uh, hmm. Normani on Crazy in Love sounds really good, actually. It, I think so. But she could also kill Baby Boy, especially if <laughs> if she's like rolling, like we've seen her roll around. In That's what I'm she's saying. Really good doing it, yeah. That's what I I'm see saying. It. No, I see it. 
Mm, yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Um, and then I think I would go. Hmm. <laughs> I know the song, but I'm like between two different artists. Okay. I think you know what. I would go end of time. End of time, Kelly Rowland. Oh, what? <laughs> I can do that. Ain't nobody tell me I can't do that. Oh my god! I would go Kelly Rowland for end of time. That's probably what. That probably would be the last song. Um, but then I think I would also throw in no, from Lemonade. It. No, I love it. <laughs> From Lemonade, I, I would think want... think about Kelly. <laughs> I did not even <laughs> consider it. Down to the ground. Wow. Um, I think for... I would either want um, Hold Up, performed by uh, Tiwa Savage or Jackie, or I would want Lemonade, um, Don't Hurt Yourself, performed by either her or Khalees. <gasps> Okay, now, Khalees on Don't Hurt Yourself? That, <laughs> that's a visceral reaction I'm having to that whole idea. Yeah. Nigga, yeah. I need to, I actually need to see that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Khalees yeah, is that. very busy farming, you know, growing yeah, no, radishes. Not, it's not happening, but you yeah. know, these are dreams we're having. Out yeah, by. we're making things up. <laughs> you know, if I, if I had my way, yeah. yes. But, oh my God, no, Don't Hurt Yourself is so perfect for Khalees. Are you kidding? Wow. No. Come on. Nah, my mind or like is blown. A, or, like a, or like we pull Fifi Dobson out of the crate. <gasps> okay. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Now, Fifi Dobson might actually show up even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she might. <laughs> Kalisa going to be like, I'm sorry, I have peppers. <laughs> Ooh, you know, unfortunately. I love Kalisa's farming post it will be time to harvest the quinoa in six weeks yeah. and i can't be away from it <laughs> during this critical point of development yeah. and so i can't so sorry good luck with your show who mm -hmm. is going to get these peas i it, it, they need me exactly i'm right. their mom so Thanks. respect that yeah. huh okay our next question comes from nicole who says what is your favorite song on each of beyonce's solo albums Yep. So I, yep, I went back to Dangerously in Love. I studied the track listing like it was an exam. Um, and I came away with me, myself, and I. <laughs> this is not going to be that hard for me. Yeah, it actually did not get super hard until she started managing her own career. And then we <laughs> made, I, I mean, just saying, and then Lemonade, I really struggled. Like it took me an hour. <laughs> Okay, so for me, Dangerously in Love, the song is Speechless. It would be. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> it would be. B-Day. Oh, Lord, I got the hiccups. B-Day, the song is probably... It's got to be a tie. Okay. Between gr green <laughs> between green green light <laughs> green light <laughs> and freakum dress for me. Okay. It's definitely green light for me. Runner up is Sugar Mama. <laughs> it was a fun bop. Sasha Fear. <laughs> <laughs> Not even including I am in that. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Where the fuck do these hiccups come from? Okay. For I am Sasha Fierce, since it's two albums. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. <laughs> you can just pick one. You do not have to pick one from each. <laughs> That's hard. Uh, is it? 
I feel like for Diva me, is the clear, but clearly best song on I Am Sasha Pierce. For me, it's between Smash Into You and Radio. Oh my God, Smash Into You. <laughs> Those are my songs. It's so romantic. <laughs> Right, you hate romance. That's a sure problem. I, mean, I don't hate it, but the best song, Diva, is right there. I mean, it is. Okay. All right. End of time. I mean, it's your favorite, so. End of time. Oh, for four? Yeah. Mm, Which okay. is, that one's real difficult. Because, I mean, it's four. You got I Care. You got One Plus yeah. One. You got Party. Yeah. You got love on top. You got countdown. Yeah. There's a got, lot I going was here. on. This is, there's, there's so much. Yeah. Beyonce, self-titled. Now, this one's tricky. This one's tricky for me. Okay. <laughs> but I have to, have to, without question, say blow. It's blow. <laughs> <laughs> Your hiccups are the best part about this. They are like a t- <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's blow and then sorry. I'm done. <laughs> Wait, and so for four, you said it was what? What was yours? End of time. End of time. Mm. So yeah, like I said, these, her albums, like her grown woman albums are the hardest for me to pick. But for four, I think when I'm talking about my absolute favorite song from the album that if you ask me to put one of these on repeat, the answer to that is best thing I never had. I just love it. Yeah. I'm just, I just, that has the biggest replay value for me on an album that I adore. So, um, and so y'all are like literally for real, y'all are not gonna agree with my pick for self-titled because niggas don't like this song, but it's superpower. I okay. love superpower. I really do. I was drawn to it from the very beginning. True. I loved everything about the visual. Frank Ocean is like very much everything about it is is checking off boxes for me. And so if I am just sitting down and listening to the music, like I want to hear superpower is going to make me feel something that I need to feel more of. So that is my answer for self-titled argue with yourself about it. And for lemonade, this was the one where I was just like, girl, are you fucking kidding me? Like I'm really supposed to be able to choose. Um, And you know how much I love like, Hold up, don't hurt yourself, sorry. Like these songs where we're disrespecting niggas. Oh, I know what song you're gonna pick. <laughs> Inject it into my veins, but I really I feel like I cannot choose between Daddy Lessons and Freedom. I felt like you were gonna pick Daddy Lessons. Yeah, I mean, and I do <laughs> you know, I like wet. It just talks about how as much soon as I heard is. the country intro, right. So I like I Daddy Lessons mean so much to me, but when but when Lemonade came out, I played Freedom on repeat as I like rode my bike and walked across the city for like hours every day. It was just something about that song that I instantly felt so connected to. So that just that's made me want why to pick up water. it's very, <laughs> you know, ruining your fucking stage and you're welcome. But yeah, so it's pretty impossible for me to choose between those two, but. Otherwise, especially the first three, that was like, I just, you know, it's just a matter of, I like songs where we're telling these niggas to go to hell (laughs) and we're choosing ourselves. Fair enough. And we're talking about how great we are. So, yeah, Yeah. I end up drawn to that. Yeah. Um, And but some of you, most of you are more romantic than that. And that's fine. I have learned to understand that about other people. And it's cute that y'all live life that way. Oh, wow. So, um, this was really fun. Thank you, everybody, for sending in your Beyonce-related questions. We're going to go back to the regular ones next week, and then we'll pick another theme. So, be ready for that. We're going to take another quick break, and then we'll be right back. Hey, y'all. We all love that clean, minty, fresh feeling that you get from mouthwash, but some of those big plastic mouthwash bottles are huge and bulky. They don't look so great. That's why we end up putting them under the sink somewhere. However, when you don't see something, you don't use it. 
And we definitely need to be making sure that we use mouthwash after we brush our teeth. Luckily, the oral care experts at Quip created an alcohol-free mouthwash that keeps your mouth healthy without the burn. And it has a sleek, refillable dispenser that looks great on your bathroom counter. That's right. The same makers of the Quip electric toothbrush and the floss are making mouthwash now. Mouthwash kills bad germs, helps prevent cavities, and leaves you feeling fresh thanks to a formula that gives your mouth everything it needs and nothing it doesn't. The Quip Forex Concentrate has fluoride, xylitol, and CPC, but I, they left out the artificial colors and the stinging alcohol that you find in a lot of other mouthwashes. You can add a mouthwash refill plan and make sure your rinse never runs out. And with a customizable Quip subscription, you can get refills automatically delivered straight to your door every three months. Pair it with a Quip electric toothbrush and one of our refillable flossers, and you will be surprised at how easy it can be to keep your whole mouth healthy. So join the over 5 million mouths already using Quip and start switching today go to get quip.com slash the read five right now to get five dollars off your mouthwash starter kit that is g-e-t-q-u-i-p.com slash the read five to get five dollars off a mouthwash starter kit which includes a refillable dispenser and a 90 dose supply of quips concentrated formula quip is the good habits company so go check them out get quip.com slash the read five today and now let's wrap up the show okay we are back my hip hiccups have thankfully died. Oh, look at God. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know where they just randomly, I guess, went away. Wow. Okay. So it is now time for the read. Mm-hmm. Take it away. Um, unfortunately, I don't have much to say this week. I am exhausted with preparing to go back to school. I am stressed out mentally over going back to school because this is happening nationwide and kids are being completely exposed to this virus in places where the government is like dead set on not protecting as many people as possible. It's really stressing me out thinking about the different variants. Have you heard of this new bitch COVID-22? Sweetie, I can't COVID twenty two iPhone ass COVID variant. It's supposed to be crazier than the Delta variant. Like <laughs> allegedly. Just I'm like Take me, Lord. Here right. I am. Right. It's don't. like it's so hard for me to exist at this time and think about the reality of what is happening because it just like instantly drains me of like hope. Mm. It is so difficult to like feel like there is some good coming somewhere when you look at people who are like doing everything they can to hurt as many people as possible so that they can continue to get richer or so they don't have to cut a check or so the economy can keep going, whatever other superficial bullshit like. So it's just for me, I can't a little freeing. Like, okay. it's not, but, like, I try to imagine it as such just because it's so much of a reminder of how human beings are just fucking stupid. And that the people in power are so, like, content on doing everything possible to just kind of keep people fucking stupid. Mm. The people who are not in power a lot of times are completely committed to being... It's just, like... I'm just here. Yeah. You know, I want to retire my parents and buy snacks and like get another dog maybe at some point. And I'd like for people to like do better for the greater good. But oh, girl, (laughs) like I'm just kind of like at this point, you y'all bitches, you got it. It's just everybody. I think it's, right. well, I got, it's to me it's free in the sense it's just like don't nobody know what the fuck they're doing we're all that we got out here let me just try to make the best of what I've 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 been given or life is giving me within the bounds that I'm allowed to yeah allowed to as a queer black man because I'm not about to run out here and be like oh the world is crazy so I could be a white nigga or act like a white <laughs> man you know what I mean I'm I'm not about to get lynched but at the same time right. Like, I, I can't continue to stress myself out over people just committing to being fucking stupid. Yeah. And reckless. Yeah. I just, I, I mean, I just hate that, like, this country will literally push you to that point where, like, 
You mm. have to check out from the reality of it or else you will lose your mind at how fucking full of despair it all seems to be. Like, this is an absolute clusterfuck what is going on in this country right now. Y'all are stressing out these healthcare providers on a whole nother fucking level. They about to start protesting. Like, that's not an exaggeration. Y'all are driving these people crazy. The ICU is full. The ER is full. The urgent care is full. And y'all want to climb on crate towers and shit. Like, like they ain't got nothing to do these days. <laughs> but, like, this problem is so big. And it seems to be getting worse. And it seems that the government has said, well, either get vaccinated. And if you can't, then stay home. And... Now the schools are open, so you don't have no excuse about a child care. So take your ass back to work. And oh, well, if you don't get vaccinated, that's on you. It just feels like. And meanwhile, a vaccine completely not even available for people under the age of 12. Which is a significant portion of the population that I thought we all loved and gave a fuck about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think I'm going to have to because that shit like my brain gets stuck on that. And I like am constantly fighting to like find the fucking joy in something because it just all seems so bleak. But you're right. I have to remind myself more of like, girl, you get one life and you did not choose to be a queer black woman in the United States of America at this time. Yet that is what you are. And so it just is what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you have a lot to still live for. You have a lot right. to offer and a lot to get out of life, Somewhere, especially given day, your circumstances maybe. and what you've been able to build up to. You know what I mean? It could be a lot worse for even an individual individuals like us. Right. You know what I mean? It and could. it's just like, I'm not about to as, 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 much as I would like for people to do better, to care more, et cetera, et cetera. It's just all kinds of different like details and nuances to the human yeah. experience that just make things really ridiculous and unfair and un you know nonsensical. And it is what it is. Like I just don't have time to right. continue trying to like wring my brain out to figure out what everybody is going to what everybody's doing or why they're doing it or get people to think the way that I feel like it it just it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like I'm just trying my best to like scratch and survive out here, but I don't want to continue. Like what I don't want to do is place myself in a position where I'm like, you know, shoveling up my grave because of like all of that. You didn't like, I, I commit myself to an early grave just based on my own shit. And my own, like, issues and toxic ways of thinking and stuff like that. Like, I just don't really have time for, like, other people's... <sighs> I, like, read the news, listen, and, and I barely even get in the way that, like, a lot of other people do. And just, like, every single day, every yeah. day, I'm just, like, people who are a lot of times in incredible positions of power. I'm just, like, where did you learn yeah. anything and then you have the people who are just regular motherfuckers like me who are like i don't give a fuck about what you're talking about and everybody can die and you're not gonna do anything about it like, all right like <laughs> i don't know you know what i mean like yeah i don't i don't even watch the news i used to have like cable news on 24 7 in my house but i don't even watch the news like that it's like the little bit of it i see <laughs> Like, because I do follow some news sources and it's like the little bit of news that I read is fucking depressing. I don't even like I don't turn on the news. All the news I get is either through Twitch or like notifications from Google or whatever on my phone. Yeah, the Apple News. Yeah, it's just, it's like that stuff that I'd be reading. But I'm just like. But it's all terrible. <laughs> like, and it's just like everything's bad and getting worse. <laughs> you are all you got period period right. you all that you got and like luckily for you you're a smart bitch you an intelligent bitch you're an entertaining <laughs> bitch you know what I mean like you have many things that are going for you and many people who are listening to this can say the same things things for themselves unfortunately many of us specifically those of us 
who are of color, who are of the queer experience, et cetera, et cetera. We have a lot of stumbling blocks in our path either way that regardless of what we have to offer are going to be a problem. But I just like, I'm just like, you know what, at the end of the day, like, I'm just, I, I can't continue to like attach myself to the fuckery of the people surrounding me or just everyday shit that I'm seeing that the average American is going into because you have like levels to it. You have like the people that are in your contact info Mm -hmm. that are doing little silly things that are like at the like to the detriment of like everyone else and then you have people who are like down at the courthouse with their white asses saying that me and Tim and Tad are going to burn this bitch to the ground if you even say COVID again. Bitch, if you say mask, if you say vaccine, we are shooting you hoes. So it's like, I have to like, I'm just like, you know what? Here I am. Here I am, Lord. (laughs) Paying my taxes. Like Calling my mama. I'm trying to stay alive in a world where white people are like doing this at school board meetings. Like they talk about we will we will chase you down and find you to niggas who are like, let's keep y'all's children alive with their toddler on their hip. We will oh kill you, God. bitches. I'm living in the Down at the PTA people. meetings. <laughs> and like not getting arrested for this. And it's hard when you are. When you live in like a, a, a state of intersectionality, specifically when you are black and queer or whatever, to not get, you know, discouraged by this stuff. Because yeah. you are already tr- like conditioned to be discouraged simply by being black and living in this country or anywhere the fuck else. But then you get reminded over and over again that white people hate us and many black people hate us as well yeah. <laughs> because we're gay or queer That's or trans true. or whatever the fuck else and it's like oh yeah we also don't give a fuck if you die horribly or get like uh, like irreversible lung damage or whatever it's like right. hard not to feel like shit right i just refuse suck my dick like i don't care yeah. like i have one itty bitty life and i'm already about to be 35 years old next year next year 34 in a few weeks but i'm already <laughs> like you know, on my way, bitch, like y'all listen and working my ass off, like having all kinds of heart palpitations and having to talk to my therapists and doctors, and all kinds of stuff, just me due to stress. Fuck, I'm gonna have fun, bitch. I don't give a fuck if COVID take me out or not. I'm gonna have a good time oh, before I, I take my steps up to St. Peter, bitch. Y'all got me <laughs> fucked up. Period. I'm over it. I'm over y'all. Mm-hmm. I'm over everybody and they crazy ass, crazy ass challenge ass bullshit y'all having a good time me too i don't care if i'm at home if i'm out i don't care where i'm at everybody doing whatever the fuck they want to that's the seed that's 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 what planet earth one is i'd like to imagine that earth two is far classier (laughs) there's a there's a parallel universe earth where the girls follow directions yeah but here it's ghetto and i imagine it's for god's (laughs) entertainment and i'm just doing the best i can i suggest everybody else but sins do this yeah maybe one of y'all lives in a country where people give a fuck about each other but that's not here it's damn sure not it's a couple only so long that you can be worried about the greater good (laughs) more than yourself like you have to balance it out you have right. to, because then you have nothing left for you. So I definitely, yeah, thank you for this, because I can see where I need to, like, start shifting my perspective a little bit and being like, you know what? Absolutely the fuck not. Bitch, Everything I go here through just to be here, bitch. You're a nigga. Suck And you're a dick. queer nigga. Oh, no. And you're a cisgender woman who has the nerve and audacity <laughs> to tell niggas of every race, culture, and creed <laughs> To eat a dick. The world is not conditioned for you yeah. to get it popping. Yeah, so no. you have to just go out here, COVID or not, like obviously doing the best that you can to keep yourself right. safe My and follow. Shoes, but you have yeah. to do the best to keep yourself happy and not let everybody else's daily fuck shit bog you down. Cause it like yeah. honestly, what just else is bo- there? I'd be on YouTube scrolling, look, trying to find out what the drag queens are talking about on, on the latest episode <laughs> of whatever the fuck. And I just scroll past like the latest in news from ABC or whatever the fuck. And they're talking about this and third. So I catch news, whether it's in preparation for this or by accident or because right. I'm genuinely looking for it. And it's like people really don't give a fuck. But I can't allow that 
to just stunt my growth, happiness, or whatever the fuck. Because we right. are already not promised much of it by virtue right. of being niggas and queer niggas at that. So, And the people who do give a fuck are not usually the ones making the news. <laughs> of course. Like, I just needed to think about this. Of course. Because the negativity drives clicks. It drives engagement. Absolutely. <sighs> okay. Thank you, friend. This was actually very useful. So... <laughs> I, I really appreciate this conversation. Thank you so much. You know, that was my read this week. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> so for me this week, I want to say, first of all, OnlyFans. Wow. I tell you to eat a dick, but I guess that's illegal for you girls now. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it shouldn't be shocking to me. I feel like it's not shocking to a lot of people. That OnlyFans now has decided to buckle down on their sexually explicit content um, and has now, like, they're saying um, by October, they will no longer be allowing sexually explicit content on the platform. Mm -hmm. And it seems as though they are... um, They're attaching this to, like, hardcore... Uh, adult content and you know rumor has it that nudity and i guess some soft core stuff is still going to be permitted but, but no people fucking. getting their <laughs> their fuck on or right. any more like you know real kinky shit they're not hearing it now i'm just really Mm. annoyed at the audacity of you bitches at OnlyFans. OnlyFans is a company that I believe was erected in like 2016, but in in the, you know, intention of like allowing people with whatever sort of fandom to create a place, basically their own digital fan club where they could have people go on behind a paywall and get all kinds of exclusive content. The girls didn't see it until Mm. people in the sex work field came on there and said, hey, let's get it popping. We've been looking for a way to properly create, curate, produce our own adult content without having to stay underneath the grip of these raggedy, shifty, scheming, scamming-ass studios. So let's get it popping on here. And OnlyFans allowed them to do that to everyone's success and financial benefit for years and years and years and years and years. Um, Since... This whole thing take, took place. I've read that OnlyFans has paid out approximately $5 billion to 1.5 like million users or creators or something like that. What? And they take, I think, around a 20% wow. haul from each creator. So you can go ahead and do the math your, uh, yourself. But the fact remains that sex workers made OnlyFans what it is today. And now that a whole bunch of likely old, wrinkly, stuffy, raggedy, ancient-ass white people at numerous bank companies, credit card companies, and things like that, other financial places, have said, oh no, porn banned. OnlyFans has told all of the sex workers, all of the adult creators on their platform that they have until October, basically, to beat feet. So now a ton of people who are making their living on that platform are left to be like, okay, well, I guess we're supposed to go and figure out how Just for Fans works or one of these other places or just figure something else to do entirely because... OnlyFans decided that, you know, they're trying to go into business with CC Winans or some shit. I'm lost <laughs> because, like, we sat back and we watched Tumblr. We've watched, like, numerous other platforms that have allowed sexually explicit content on their website that primarily is the reason that their websites or their platforms thrived, succeeded, excelled. We've watched them be like, oh, no more, and then die. So I don't really Mm. understand what 
the purpose is behind this. I have to assume that the creators, the bigwigs, the execs over at OnlyFans have cashed in, their pockets are lined, they're set for life, and they don't give a fuck what happens with OnlyFans uh, at this point. Mm. They don't give a fuck what happens at OnlyFans at this point because all of your favorite X-rated creators have made it so that these people don't have to worry about that website, a feature website, or anything the fuck else in the future. So they can sell you on this idea that, oh, well, you know, it's about the the, the banks and the companies are, are worried about going into business or it's harder to, you know... To, to do business with them when we have adult content. And why the fuck do you think that that is? Hmm. Why the fuck do you think that that is? These companies like MasterCard and Visa or whoever the fuck would like you to think that it's all about, you know, human trafficking, ch- you know, child endangerment, rape, and things of that nature. Of course, Any form of pornography, adult entertainment or whatever is going to have a small percentage that, you know, is like evil, insidious and has these kinds of things. But like shutting the whole shit down altogether, compromising everybody's way of life is not a way to do anything about that. Like, people are referencing how, like, oh, you know, Pornhub basically similarly wiped. Like, I don't know how many people know this, but, like, Pornhub at this point is kind of, like, exclusive for studios and, like, actual create like you can't really there's not much amateur porn if any available on Pornhub at all anymore and this was after like some credit card companies like MasterCard and stuff were launching alleged investigations on like you know child porn and stuff like that that was uh, available on Pornhub so you shut down the whole ass shit rather than targeting listen it is one thing a bitch like me does is is I I watch pornography. <laughs> like I know the girls. Right. <laughs> and I've wondered why there aren't more processes, but even stuff just within like the user interface or the accessibility of the website to report stuff that seems sketchy, looks sketchy, feels a certain type of way. Y'all don't give a fuck about human trafficking. You don't give a fuck about child endangerment. You don't give a fuck about rape. What you actually give a fuck about is the fact that there are people, specifically women, people of the queer and trans experience that are capitalizing off of these women using their sexuality. You hate mm-hmm. the way, the fact that these exact people, especially women, whether cis or trans, have autonomy, autonomy over their bodies, their sexuality, what they're doing, and all of those things. You hate that. And even more than that, you hate the fact that these motherfuckers can cash out and go and buy a big, lavish-ass house mm. by way of how fucking sexy they are. Meanwhile, you gotta go down and talk to Mildred about whatever the fuck, you know, laws or, or bylaws or whatever the fuck you about to go and put into effect to ruin somebody else's goddamn life, and you hate yourself. No Nobody wants to fuck you. Nobody finds you fucking attractive. And if anybody, if anybody is perusing these motherfucking OnlyFans pages, these Pornhub pages, if anybody is active and these people's work, it's you. I don't have any interest in, in, in spending time explaining to you motherfuckers that sex work is work because you understand that. Mm. You motherfuckers know that shit. I don't give a fuck how many of these people are 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 on here fucking sucking, doing whatever the fuck, pinching their nipples or whatever your kink is with ear to ear grins. That's what the fuck they're supposed to do. It's for your entertainment, you ungrateful bitch. It's so you can have a good time. It's so your stupid, unsexy, lonely, dumb ass can have a good fucking time and feel sexy and get your fucking rocks off, bitch. They're supposed to feel like they're ha- like. Because if there's anything that I can't stand in my adult entertainment, it's somebody that clearly is only trying to entertain me for a buck. Maybe that's somebody else's cake. But I want to at least feel like you're having a good damn time. That's why they call you porn actors. That's why they call you adult actors. Because you are entertainers. That's why they call you adult entertainers. Because you are at work, bitch. 
Get off your motherfucking high horse, you ungrateful bastards. You be the first ones down at the motherfucking pink perusing all of un- <laughs> Uncle Clifford's goddamn uh, 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 ladies. And then be the same ones trying to enact all the goddamn laws so that they can't eat. Yep. Fuck y'all. Yes, I'm sure there are there are other platforms that people can go and these same people can go and probably make money or whatever. But that's not the fucking point. OnlyFans started like a while prior to this doing little shady shit, trying to like, you know, govern what types of, you know, kinks and what types of content their adult uh, creators are putting. And now it's just like, oh, you can, you know, post your nudes, but, you know, don't nobody want to see penetration or whatever. And if you think that they're not coming for you girls who are like, oh, well, <laughs> I don't do collabs. If you think that they're not coming for y'all bitches next, you crazy as fuck. It's ridiculous. And I'm sure a lot of the people who run like studios and have been running these adult studios that you actually should be worried about that truly don't give a fuck about their performers, whether it's their age, their safety, their health, any of these things, they may be the ones that you're putting back into power and prominence. The beauty of things like an OnlyFans where that the people who are actually putting their health, their body and whatever on the line have more of an option to curate that their content themselves choose who they film with, where they film and all that other kind of shit. But you don't want to like, you really just want to compromise people's health and safety and then say, Oh, well, it's really about the, it's about the kids. You don't want to fuck about nobody. Goddamn kids. Shut the fuck up. All you care, care about is your money, your pockets, and all of these people that have been putting their health, putting their sex, putting their all of this stuff on the line for themselves, yes, but also lining your motherfucking pockets. Now that you satisfied, you're like, oh, well, the bank says this. Fuck y'all. Fuck OnlyFans. Y'all bitch is about to be dead in another couple of months anyway. And it is what it is. And I know you don't care because everybody who really is like, behind the the coins y'all are satisfied you solidified it is what it is sex work is work stop trying to like play like these people are not working their asses off like i said i don't give a fuck if they're smiling with nut on their face i don't give a fuck if they're grinning and laughing and giggling when they got you know like they are working many of them are doing videos with people they don't even fucking like don't really want like trying to get your fucking ungrateful ass rocks off stop acting like they're not working. Get over yourself, bitch. Get over yourself. Mm. Um, and now I just want to say once again, wow. Tucker Carlson. I don't even know what this bitch did. I didn't know about this until like the past week. But apparently there's been like a right wing conspiracy that Elon Omar married her brother. Um, yeah, I've heard that. Those so that are... she could get citizenship in America. Yeah. And they've been saying that for a while. Tucker Carlson and some bitch name, what is it, Miranda Devine, were on Fox News trying to once again legitimize this theory. And citing some random Republican named Anton Lazaro, who admittedly stalked Ilhan Omar and used alleged DNA that he got from a cigarette that he scooped off of, I guess, our premises somewhere. To try and prove that this woman married her biological brother to get citizenship in America. Not only is that the dumbest goddamn bullshit that I've never heard, apparently this Anton Lazaro is was also arrested last week on multiple charges of underage sex trafficking. And this was known when they spoke about it. But they just said lightly, oh, well, he was arrested and tried to dress it up as if the FBI had something to do with his arrest to cover up the truth of Ilhan Omar being incestuous and marrying her goddamn brother so that she could be an American and ruin our democracy or whatever the fuck. And of course, Tucker and everybody else at their fucking axe wound ass antics behind Fox (laughs) Wound, behind Fox News got to act like, oh, well, you know, it's just, it's entertainment and it's a TV show and da 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 and all the the other shit. Like, you know, all of the fucking dripping inbred hogs that watch your goddamn show take every piece of bullshit that y'all motherfuckers say and will take a 
bullet for it as if it is truer than true. This is bullshit. You knew that it was bullshit and you wasted everybody's goddamn time and opportunity to come on on motherfucking air and continue to lie about this lady that ain't done nothing to nobody, mind her motherfucking business and say that she's married her motherfucking brother to be an American as if it's just ever so goddamn lit over here. And then your fucking source, your source was arrested for child trafficking for sex trafficking kids meanwhile y'all over here telling full grown goddamn adults they can't play with their pussy on only only fans no more or take dick on only fans no more because oh what about the children fuck each and every last one of y'all a through z Fuck y'all bitches. I hate you. I hate your mama for having you. I hate your <laughs> daddy for having you. I hate y'all bitches. I hate every single one of you. Where's your park? Fuck your park. I hate y'all bitches. <laughs> I hate you. I hate all of y'all. I'm so tired of y'all motherfuckers. I'm tired of y'all. And quietly, a lot of you niggas before you who and haul and amen and well, fuck y'all too. Fuck y'all too on the hit. Oh, like, because... A lot of y'all motherfuckers I seen tagged on to Boosie, tagged on the rest of these motherfuckers that don't give a shit about y'all and ain't leading y'all into nothing but pits of fire. They these motherfuckers that y'all celebrate and love and dick ride so motherfucking much really just want to be this. Mm. They just want the freedom to say ridiculous, reckless, unfounded, dangerous shit like this without consequence. And y'all allow it. Y'all allow it and they don't do anything for y'all or for your community or for your culture besides offer you a thousand dollars if you put your motherfucking pussy on Instagram. I hate y'all. Suck my scrotum. Good night. Okay. Well. <laughs> and before we get out of here, <laughs> I should have no. Elon Musk. Oh, I don't. Okay. All right. Elon Musk talking about some by 2022 or something. He going to have Telsa bots, actual humanoid Telsa <laughs> robots, <not>. Tes- <laughs> Tesla, te- whatever, actual robots walking about and doing laundry and shit. Elon, I have a couple of words to run by you. <laughs> Terminator. I robot. <laughs> 2001 Space Odyssey, Westworld, <laughs> Tron, The Matrix, Age of Ultron, Deus Ex Machina. Bitch, like. Mm. How many more sci fi artificial intelligence fictional stories do we need to have for you motherfuckers to understand that this is a bad idea? If ever there was not a time to introduce artificial intelligence to what's going on in the human world, it is now. Because I know you program the right robot to see what's going on on planet Earth. They're wiping us out, and I can't blame them. I can't blame them. What am I supposed to tell the Terminator when he come to my motherfucking door and tell me it's my time to die? Look at our circumstances. Fuck y'all. I hate you bitches. I hate y'all. Good night. I'm finished. I'm officially okay. done. Okay. Whew. All right. Um, That will wrap up this week's episode of The Read. Check us out on social media at This Is The Read. Our website is thisistheread.com. Um, I'm trying to think if we have any news or announcements. I don't think so. Friend, do you have anything else before we go? We have a comedy album in the works that's um, in the works. And you aren't ready. None of you are ready. (laughs) You're not ready. Okay. And on that note, we will see y'all next week.